الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والكرام أو الله عز وجل open the doors of knowledge and wisdom for us have mercy on us O oh, the one who is the most honorable the most gracious بلغ العلا بكماله كشف الدجا بجماله حسنت جميع خصاله صلوا عليه وآله Start your day with the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal Yes, indeed, for all praises belong to Allah Azza wa Jal Our sustainer, our provider, cherisher and nourisher The master of the day of judgment, the owner, initiator and creator of everything that exists We send peace and blessings upon Nabi Akram Noor e Mujassam Shah e Bani Adam, the peace of our hearts and mind, the most generous and kind, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We send peace and blessings upon his illustrious family and noble companions, alaihi muridwan. Marhaba, marhaba, ahlan wa sahlan bikum to all our viewers and listeners of Madini Channel. You are watching the early echo program. Thumma alhamdulillah. We thank Allah azza wa jalla for all the blessings which He, subhanahu wa taala. had bestowed upon us through the blessings of Nabi Kareem Rauf Rahim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our topic of discussion for this morning are the rights of, between husband and wife. Jiha, the rights of, of, uh, of husband and wife when they are married and they are living as a couple, what hukuk and rights they have over each another and how should they live a simple and a humble life as husband and wives. is what we are going to be discussing. There are numerous and there are many, many problems out there in society. Let's listen to the virtues and the blessings of, of reciting through the park, dear viewers of Madini channel. Alhamdulillah. Since it is a very famous Qasida and this Qasida subhanallah is written by Imam Sharfuddin Busiri rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali. And this Qasida furthermore is that Qasida, dear viewers, which is recited throughout the world. Jiha, you are right. It is Mawlaya Salli wa Sallim. Daiman abadana ala habi. Bika khairi khalki kullihimi. A very famous qasida written and composed by none other than Imam Sharfuddin Busiri rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. He was a very famous scholar and a very pious personality. And it has been mentioned that he was suffering from paralysis. And he underwent long-term treatments but nothing actually gave him any relief from his sickness and illness to the extent that one day he composed a plea in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal using the medium and wasila of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he composed many many couplets in the love of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it was that night when he composed this Qasida Mawlaya Salli wa Sallim Daiman Abadan Ala Habibika Khairi Khalki Kullihimi He was blessed with the ziyarat of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in his dream the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed his affectionate hands over his affected body and furthermore blessed him with his shawl in the dream. He says, Rahmatullah alayhi, when I opened my eyes, Allahu Akbar, I was able to move. I was able to walk as if nothing happened to me. I was paralyzed and due to this paralysis, I was unable to move and I had no movement in half of my body. But after the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam blessed me with his vision, in my dream, I was able to move. Therefore, this Qasida is named after that shawl, Qasida Burda. For Burda means a shawl or scarf that's used for a covering. And the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his dream had blessed him with this amazing shawl. 
Subhanallah. As we go along in our program, Rukni Shura Haji Abdul Habib Attari Damat Barakatuh Mula Aliya will be reciting this Qasida, inshallah, Zawajalla. It is the morning parts. Let's listen to this beautiful Qasida, Burda Sharif, rendered and recited by none other than our respected Rukni Shura Haji Abdul Habib Attari. Remember, it is a Qasida, for it is mentioned that when duas are made, try and recite this Qasida. Because through the blessings of this Qasida, which is accepted, definitely accepted in the court of Allah Azza wa Jalla, then your du'as will also be answered. Many of our pious predecessors, many of the ulama and the scholars, whenever they would make du'a, they would recite one couplet of this. For example, Ya Rabbi Bil Mustafa, Ballig Maqasidana, Waghfir Lana Ma Mada, Ya Wasi Al Karami. Go through the meaning of these ash'ar and these couplets, dear viewers, and you can even by heart them and recite them when you make dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jalla. You will surely attain its blessings. So yes, inshallah, once we do return, we are going to be discussing the rights and the hukuk between husband and wife. Please stay tuned and locked with Madani channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. بك خير الخلق كله مولا يا صل وسل دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كله محمد سيد الكونين وثق عليه محمد سيد الكونين فريقيني من عرب ومن عجمي مولا يا صل وسل دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كله مولا يا صل وسل دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كله شفاعته هو الحبيب الذي ترجى شفاعته لكل هول من الأهوال مقتحم مولا يا صل وسل دائما أبدا على حبيب بك خير الخلق كل صل وسل دائما أبدا على حبيب بك خير الخلق كله يا أكرم الخلق ما لي من ألوذ به يا أكرم الخلق ما لي من ألوذ به سواك عند حلول الحديث مولا يا صل وسل دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كله مولا يا صل وسل دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كله فإن من جوديك الدنيا مولا يا صل وسل دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كله مولا يا صل وسل دائما أبدا على حبي بك خير الخلق كله ثم الرضا عن أبي بكر وعن عمر وعن علي وعن 
عثمان دل کرامی مولا یا صلی و سلم دائیمن آبادن علا حبی بیکا خیر خلق کل لیمی مولا یا صلی و سلم دائیمن آبادن علا حبی بیکا خیر خلق کل حسن خاتمتی یا مبدی انی علی مولا یا صلی و سلم دائیما آبادا علا حبی بیکا خیر خلق کل لیمی مولا یا صلی و سلم دائیما آبادا علا حبی بیکا خیر خلق کل یا ربی بالمصطفی بلغ ما قاصدنا و غفر لنا ما مرضا یا واسع الكرامی مولا یا صلی و سلم دائیما آبادا علا حبی بیکا خیر الخلق کل صلی و سلم دائیما آبادا علا حبی بیکا خیر الخلق کل لیمی وغفر لی قارئیها وغفر لی سامیعیها وغفر لی قارئیها وغفر لی سامیعیها سألتوک الخیر یا غلجودی وال مولا یا صلی و سلم دائیما آبادا علا حبی بیکا خیر الخلق کل لیمی مولا یا صلی و سلم دائیما آبادا علا حبی بیکا خیر الخلق کل سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ ما شاء اللہ this was the قصیدہ بردہ شریف مولا یا صلی و سلم دائما ابدا علا حبیبی کا خیر خلق کلہیمی سبحان اللہ what a beautiful recitation by our respected and honorable رکن شورا and a very great personality enlightening and rejuvenating personality ما شاء اللہ سبحان اللہ dear viewers of مدینی چینل coming back to our discussion As I said earlier, husband and wife, uh, there's a verse in the Holy Quran that speaks about Allah Azza creating a male and a female in pairs. Simply so that we find happiness and tranquility and contentment within each another. In the Holy Quran, Allah Azza has further mentioned وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And the woman has similar rights to that of a man within the Islamic laws. So, Whatever hukuk, whatever rights a man has, the similar rights to a man, to the husband, a woman as well has. Many people violate the rights of women considering them to be weak, naive, not talkative, coming from a weak background. Oh, she's a woman, she's a girl, she's weak by nature. So people take advantage of such women. However, dear viewers of Madani Channel, Alhamdulillah, in today's episode, we want to openly discuss this matter, which has been mentioned in the Holy Quran Park and Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned very beautifully this verse, this verse was revealed remember dear viewers before we even go any further I want to clarify once again this point here that Islam is the saviour for the rights of women we, amongst the Sahaba Ikram there were such champions that stood for the rights of women and subhanallah Allah Azza wa Jalla had revealed chapters in the Holy Quran Park to protect the dignity and the izzat, the reputation of women. And until today it is mahfuz woman that never had rights, never had shares, never have respect. All those properties that were lost once upon a time through the blessings of Islam, 
through the blessings of the arrival of Mustafa Jani Rahman sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that lost dignity and lost respect was given back to them subhanallah for the sahaba and the tabi'een tabi'i tabi'een our pious predecessors fought and struggled and showed the world how to protect the dignity of women now look how the quran protects the dignity if someone says women in islam have no rights because they are suppressed then this is the answer because the quran says wala hunna mithlu alladhi alayhinna bil ma'ruf allahu akbar and the women also have rights similar to those of men over them in accordance with islamic law now with regards to this subhanallah whatever hukuk and rights a man has the woman has the same it's not that you're a man so you have a upper hand and she's a woman so she's suppressed and she has no rights no it's not like that now listen to the rights as we discuss them famous personalities hazrat sayyidna imam abu abdullah muhammad bin ahmad abu bakr qurtubi rahmatullahi ta'ala alina he's a pious personality a very learned personality in the tafsir and commentary of this verse listen to what he has to say subhanallah he says he states regarding this verse the rights of the woman are important and necessary just as the rights of husband are necessary now hibrul umma as we discussed about him the greatest alim or one of you know a very powerful scholar and alim of this deen who is none other than hazrat sayyidina ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala an he says i like to beautify myself for my wife just as she likes to beautify herself for me something simple and small as this look at the words dear viewers of madini channel he says i like to simplify i like to beautify myself for my wife just as she does for me now this is her rights which she has over me that i should look nice for her and whenever she dresses up whenever she maintains herself the reason and the maqsad behind that should be for her husband alone and nothing else now look at how these pious individuals set examples and explain the reason subhanallah as to why would they like to do certain things because allah azza wa jalla has protected the dignity and the respect of women the honor of our islamic sisters subhanallah anyways the rights of women the rights of islamic women are very very important they are very very important and a husband should never be heedless this regard rather he should pay full attention to the rights of his wife furthermore allahu akbar just like how a husband would like to like his wife to beautify herself likewise it's human nature that a husband should also think in the same way towards his wife he should not only look nice when he goes to the office when he goes to work but at all times he should pay full attention that this is one of the reasons why we have the ratio of talaq and divorce in our society that has reached its peak our islamic sisters mashallah that are in parda that are in veil mashallah mubarak to them who do so mashallah and for those who don't may allah azza wa jalla grant us all hidayah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our islamic sisters and mothers out there that they also fulfill this command of allah azza wa jalla in the holy quran pak by practicing hijab by practicing niqab by practicing the things which islam has told us and warned us to do nonetheless dear viewers as i'm saying subhanallah the talaq that has increased in our society is simply because of these matters whereas our islamic sisters would only like to wear and dress in the best of clothing when they will attend any ceremonies wedding functions gatherings programs but when we are with our husbands and our husbands are with our wives then it's a different situation altogether there is no attraction and there is no uh, i would say enthusiasm for this to happen and they say that we are married for 15 years 20 years now so there's no need for me to keep you know attracting my husband because he was once attracted to me and now we are married but now i don't need to do this astaghfirullah this is something which is against the rights of one another and this is the reason why many a times men then uh, you know uh would get attracted and due to the tricks and traps of shaitan which is so common many of the men out there fall and they would make this mistake and commit this sin however dear viewers look at aisha siddiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha and she says rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam paid so much of attention towards this rights subhanallah if we spoke about 
being slim, trim, being neat, tidy, being clean. She says there was no one better than the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this regard. At all times, he was always glittering, sparkling. He always kept himself tidy. The Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would never worry any person. She says he would fix and mend his own shoes and he would stitch and patch his own clothes. Totally independent, Allahu Akbar. He was most concerned about the rights of his wife. It's for this reason. In one narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ He says, Allahu Akbar, the best among you, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ The best among you is he who is best towards his family, towards his wife, towards his kids, his relatives. Allahu Akbar. And then he says, and as far as I'm concerned towards the rights of my family, then I am better than you all. In comparison to my Sahaba, my companions, I am better than you all towards the rights of my family. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So dear viewers of Madani channel, the point I make Subhanallah is simple and it is clear that if we speak about the rights of women, Focus on the equality that Islam had given men and women. That they both are equal in this regard, that they both have rights which needs to be fulfilled. Just as violating the rights of any other person is wrong, likewise violating the rights of your spouse, of your wife is also very wrong. Now the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa had revealed, or the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa had given strict instructions and orders never to hurt your wife in any way possible. For those who beat them, for those who shout at them, for those who hit them, focus on the words of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, no husband, no husband, la yafraku mu'minun mu'minatan. No husband should ever hate his wife. He should never hate his wife. If there is a habit he hates, then surely there is a quality and a habit about her that you would like as well. Allahu Akbar. If there's something you dislike about her, there's some quality she has that gets you irritated, it gets you upset, then there should be some good habits about her too that should make you happy and not make you hate her. Allahu Akbar. Now these are the orders of the Holy Rasul which religion in the world has explicitly and openly discussed these matters and mentioned the dignity, honor and status of a woman explaining to the husbands that since you are going to live with each another, you're going to extend your progeny and grow your family to be even know the rights of each another. There are rights for the roads when you drive a vehicle without having and obtaining a authentic license once one, a person is not allowed on the road. If you don't know the rules and regulations of driving, one cannot obtain a license and if you have done so then you can drive maybe but you don't know the rules of the road and because of that accidents can take place. Likewise, many other practices requires degrees and requires um, experiences. And since marriages is something which is human nature, a, Allah has created a man and a woman for them to be together so that we find peace amongst each another, we find happiness between each another. But since husband and wife would intend to be with each another without knowing the hukuk and rights of each another, then how do you live under one roof? How do you just say the three words and get married, pay the mahar without knowing the rights of my wife, without studying the Quranic laws and rights about talaq? How does talaq be given? Why is talaq given? Which are the conditions in which talaq is given? Since marriage is sunnah, but once you are married, now the rights becomes farz. The rights is not sunnah. The rights of your wife and the rights of the husband now become obligatory upon you. First marriage itself was just a sunnah and a beautiful sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu And the moment a person fulfills the sunnah, now once the sunnah is done, there are rights and hukuk which you're supposed to know prior to your marriage. And this is what our youth out there avoid. Every other thing they would study about marriage except this. So we have a serious problem in our society, especially with the youth, with the upcoming generations that intend to get married. May Allah save our people from sinning and may Allah 
you know, grant good relationships for our, our, our children out there, especially for girls and boys who are looking for pious husbands and wives. May Allah Azawajalla make them pious and make their awlaad pious as well. Lekin, yek jaga hai ki hame sochna chahiye. We should basically, you know, be very much concerned about this. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so concerned about the rights of women that men do not harm them and hurt them and abuse them in any way possible. It's for this reason, though in the time of ignorance, when a woman would lose her husband, the iddat and waiting period for her to come back into society, for her to get married again, for her to remarry, before she remarries, she would have to go and spend one year in a hut which was so small. Whatever provisions she would have, she would have. She's not allowed back into the city and she would spend one year. When one year is over in this way, though many people will not even make it throughout the year. But if anyone did make it, then the droopings of the animal will be placed on her shoulders, on her body. And then she will be made to rub her body against the animal and then parade around the town. And this was an announcement that this particular woman has now completed her iddat period and this was something that used to happen in the time of ignorance. But look at the beauty of Islam, that Islam comes and eliminates this, this anti-Islamic custom, whereas thousands of women in this world have lost their lives because of this, this custom. Many other women even today, aaj bhi, aaj ke zamane mein bhi aisa chal raha ki, many women will burn themselves alive with their husbands. Like an Islam has protected the honor of woman. Hamare aqa, hamare pyare 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 aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khud irshad farmate hain. Aap zara sunye farmane Ali Shan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki. He says, subhanallah, no man, no one from among you should hit and hate his wife. Like how a slave is beaten. Jis tarah kisi hum ghulam ko marte hain. Like how a slave is beaten, no man, no one from among you should ever beat and hit his wife in that way. Then at the end of the day, after you hit her, at the end of the day, you want to be close to her. Then you want to be very close to her. When I speak about closeness, I mean of being very close to her. You want to meet with her after you beat her in the morning, after you shout at her, embarrass her, swear her. You know, with different things, people do these things here. So, Rasulullah Sallallahu has warned his Sahaba and warned his companions for not doing this. Allahu Akbar. So, dear viewers of Madani Channel, Alhamdulillah, <clears throat> there is peace and there is tranquility. Sahaba Ikram are those role models who set, who set these examples. Rasulullah Sallallahu would always emphasize on these matters. He would always train his companions how to treat their wives, how to be with them. Hazrat Sayyidina Arbaaz bin Sariya radiyallahu anh, kitne bade sahabi rasool hai sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aap ek martaba apne ghar tashif le jate hain. He goes to his house and he gives his wife a glass of water. To aap ki ahliya kehti hai ki you never ever would give me water. Aaj achanak se kya hua ki aaj aap ne hame paani ka glass diya. You have given me some water to drink. And he says, Abhi mein sarkar ke bargah se aarahun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am coming from the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I heard him say, Ki agar kisi ni paani tak pilaya apne ahliya ko, If anyone had even given water to his wife to drink, It is also counted as charity and sadaqah. Allahu Akbar. It is a rewarding act. It is an action of reward and blessings, even to give your wife a glass of water. Huzuri Prophet would even speak on matters of this. He would motivate his Sahaba. He would, he would speak to them. He would train his companions. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. This was Hazrat Sayyidina Arbaaz bin Sariya radiyallahu an. Subhanallah. Many other companions, Hazrat Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, and many other such great Sahaba ikram, Subhanallah, one companion, ek sahabi, he was actually giving his wife a morsel to eat. He put a morsel and luqma into the mouth of his wife and then she said that today you have fed me. What is the matter that you are feeding me? And he says, I have heard the Holy Rasul say that if you have even fed your wife a single morsel, it is counted as charity and sadaqah. Subhanallah, kya baat hai Madine ki? 
dear viewers of Madhuri channel, now look at the verses of the Quran that speaks about protecting the dignity and honor of your wife, of woman. And not one or two, but there are chapters and there are so many other surahs in the Quran that defends and protects this, this aspect. And then you have the hadith of the Holy Rasul that further motivates this and emphasizes and stresses on this issue that we should never beat them, we should never ill-treat them, we should never abuse them and oppress them in any way possible. This is the beauty and the teachings of Islam. If you have to move on, look at the blessings and the virtues which Almighty Allah had placed between a husband and wife. Okay, fine. There are many problems, there are many difficulties, ups, downs, good days, bad days. Every day is different, right? If a wife has to make sabr, her husband isn't 100% correct. He's a good man by nature, but he makes mistakes. It upsets the wife. Then she complains to the neighbors, she complains to her family members, her relatives, her own parents, her brothers, her siblings. My husband is like this, my husband is like that, my husband is like this, and my husband is like that. The whole muhalla, the entire neighborhood, everyone knows the arguments and fights and quarrels and problems that occur in this one particular house. Everyone knows about it. And then she says, well, I make sabr with him. I'm with him for 15, 20 years. I'm still making sabr. So is this counted as sabr and patience, number one? The answer will be no, dear viewers of Madani channel, simply because Sabr and patience is in the very first instant. So, once again, Islam defends, Islam protects the dignity of woman. That if you are stressed, then here is a blessing and virtue for difficulties that you are going through. For Allah will reward you for having sabr, for being calm and for having patience in your relationship. And if you cannot manage it, then Islam has also left an exit for you. There is a way out if there's a way in, but with understanding, without fighting. If you are really upset with your wife, then do not leave her, beat her. Rather, you can separate just for a moment with her into a different room. Separate your rooms. The moment you will separate your rooms and you will be away from each another, that moment will might bring you back together. Then leaving your house and running away, leaving the country and running away, disappearing without even letting any family members know where you have gone. Allahu Akbar. So these are some important matters, dear viewers of Madini channel. Look at the thawab and reward which you get for making sabr. Ab sabr pe jab baat chali hai, to mashallah ye bhi suni hai. Uh, you know, there was a very famous philosopher by the name of uh, Bu Ali Sina. Aapka naam hai Bu Ali Sina. Ye bade mashhoor falsafi hai, uh, philosophist hai. And uh, mashallah, he mentions a parable about a very great wali of Allah Azza wa whose name was Sheikh Abul Hassan Khirqani Rahmatullahi. Ab inka charcha bhi kafi bada tha. He was a very famous personality. Who was a famous personality? Sheikh Abul Hassan Khirqani Rahmatullahi. So, Bu Ali Sina, this philosopher one day went to visit Abul Hassan Khirqani. So when he goes there to the house and he knocks on the door from the inside, it was asked who is there and then he mentioned it is him. He mentioned his name that I am Bu Ali Sina and he was a very famous person. So, so when he asked about the husband, I am looking for Abu Hassan Hirqani, he would, you know, with titles, he mentioned his name and Adab ke saath aapka naam liya to jo thi, the wife in the house, she began to complain about him. You're respecting him, you're using such amazing titles for my husband when I know his reality, he's not as you think he is. Allahu Akbar. And she began to complain and speak rude and bad things about him or things that were disturbing and disappointing. So Bu Ali Sina was very saddened to hear these bad comments about the sheikh that he came to visit from so far. And he thought to himself, well, I came so far and yet you know, I never get to meet him and I'm hearing all these negative things about this personality which, who I came to visit. But anyways, he was still given the address. Perhaps he's in a jungle. He's going, gone to break some wood or sticks, whatever. So, Bu Ali Sina goes to the jungles, to the forests. And there were places and areas designated for this kind of work. And when he goes there, he sees that Sheikh Abul Hassan Khirqani is breaking the trees and the logs from the tree and he is loading onto the animal. What was the animal? It was a lion. Or he was standing next to a lion. He was riding on a lion. So if you seen him, you know, preparing his logs and sticks and loading them on the lion, 
So he got shocked and astounded by this. And then he says, well, look, it's simple as this. My wife talks a lot and she says many things which isn't true about me. But the blessings of this, what you're seeing right now is the sabr I have with her. Because I have sabr and patience with my wife, because I listen to her in exchange of listening to my wife, even now the lions listen to me. Allah has blessed me with this ability that even the animals, lions listen to me for having sabr and patience with my wife alone. Allahu Akbar. For not back chatting and yelling and fighting and arguing and escalating the matter furthermore. Allah Zawajalla has made other animals obedient to me instead of my wife. So, this is how it is, dear viewers of Madani channel. Subhanallah. You need to grow together in the deen. You need to get closer to Allah Zawajalla. You need to be recognized in this way that you are obedient with your wife and husband together. You need to read salah together, keep rosas together, fast together, do Islamic activities together. And to this togetherness is what unites a person. This togetherness is that which unites a husband and wife and keeps them happy. Not every luxury, dear viewers of the world. Dear viewers of Madani channel, I want to leave you with some beautiful points before we come to the end of today's episode and program. Remember, dear viewers, Allah Zawajalla has also mentioned in the Holy Quran Park, Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahunna. Now here again an example has been given of you being her garment and her being your garment. So though there are striking parables in the Quran, there are thought-provoking stories in the Quran. But this chapter of marriage and this chapter of you know protecting the rights of husband and wife and rights of family members is something else altogether. You know, look at this example. Allah Azza has commanded us to be a garment of our family members, meaning she is your garment and you are her garment. Why this have been mentioned in this subhanallah? So <clears throat> the scholars have mentioned that clothes are close to you. The clothes are close. Your kapre hote wo karib hote hain. Subhanallah. Or saati saath mein, subhanallah, behind your clothes is your bare skin. Is kapre ki piche hamari, hamara chamada hai. It's my skin. Is kapre ki niche or piche. One cannot see and expose the body. Likewise, your wife or the husband is supposed to be the garment for one another. Meaning you protect one another. You complement one another. You grow with each another together in the deen and in the dunya. Just as the defects of the body isn't revealed to any person because the clothes protects you. Likewise, the shortcomings of the wife, the family members should not know, friends and relatives should not know. And his shortcomings, nor should the wife go and expose and tell the neighbors and tell her family members as well. Unless you need to speak to someone about some major problem, you want to rectify something. But I'm speaking on a general basis that we should not look for faults and expose the bad habits of them to anybody else. So clothes protect your skin from the outside and inside. A husband is the maintainer of his wife and the wife protects her husband, home and property. She protects your home and she protects your property, subhanallah. Clothes beautify you. Kapre ke wajay se banda khubsurat lagta hai. It makes him look nice. A husband and a wife complement each other in the same way. In this dunya as well as in the hereafter. Allahu Akbar. This is how a husband and wife should be. Clothes are comfortable when one is around their spouse. They should feel easy and comfortable as well. If the clothes are tight or the clothes are tight, the clothes are tight, the clothes are tight, the clothes are tight. A wife should be that when he's around his wife or the wife is around the husband, they should feel comfort and feel safety. So one can relax around their spouse and find comfort in them and the words when they are difficulty. In other words, when they are difficulty, agar kuch buri baat bhi ho rahi ho, they must be able to discuss and talk to one another. It must never be the case whereas you find it very difficult to even relate a problem to your husband. You say something to him and then he explodes. Or you say something, he says something to you and you explode. There must be a relationship where communication is open for each another. It's very, very important. And I want to leave you on this note, dear viewers, because of time and time constraints. Look at the rights of woman. Look at the dignity of a mother. Ki yehi aurat, jab bachi hoti hai, to maqam aur hota hai. Phir ek ladki banti hai, phir shadi hoti hai, bachche hoti hai, maa banti hai, subhanallah. When she becomes a mother, look at the status Islam has given to the woman. This topic 
is extended and there's much more that can be said and there are much more parables in the Quran that speaks about the hukuk and rights of each another and the way we should be with each another. Renew your nikah, renew your iman, you know, renew your, your goals and your aim in your marriage. Even if you are 30, 40 years with your wife and the things that didn't come right, now to this time to fix up the matters because if you have ever violated her right or if she has violated your right on the day of judgment, you will be accountable for that as well. May Allah Azza forgive us. Until then, stay good, be good, do good. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remembrance of